Trading Nut, episode 187. Yeah, I think what really helped me, maybe not like strategy wise, but helped me grow in those different levels exponentially was when I stopped focusing on the amount of money, like just the money in general. Like I started trading and I was able to make money really quickly. And that was what hooked me. And I think that's what hooks a lot of people in this industry or intrigued in this industry coming on to like any kind of social media, you know, they're, they're selling your emotions with these fancy cars and clothes and cash and, you know, the lifestyle. Right. Mm. Um, So people are, they kind of set a precedent that sets people up for failure really, because as a trader, if I wasn't a trader and I was intrigued because what I saw in my mind, I want money and I want lots of it to, to live that lifestyle. Right. So I come in, like, I want to make all this money. And that's the worst thing to do because like when you're in the, in the charts, if you're focusing on the money, your emotions are going to become involved. And you, when your emotions are involved, the trading psychology, which is hugely underestimated will cause you to see things that don't exist in the chart. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than... I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax. Learn the process. Candlestick pattern trading is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up, traders? Welcome to another installment of the Trading Up podcast. I'm your host, Cam Hawkins, and today we've got a trader that goes by the name of Lord Banks on the show. Now, if you listen to the very end, what I'm going to do is tell you why he came up with the name Lord Banks. We talked about it before the show, so it's not in the actual show, but I'll tell you at the end. Stay tuned. Now, I got him on because... I jumped on one of his live streams and saw that he had a 19 to 0 winning streak. So you're also going to find that out at the very start of the interview, whether or not that continued, how far it continued. So stay tuned for that. And what you're about to hear is a very transparent and motivational story. This guy's got eight businesses that he runs alongside his trading, and his trade, you're going to find out how his trading eclipse eclipses his business income. It's crazy, right? You wouldn't think with eight businesses all successful and some over six figures. I'm not too sure if all of them are, but it's it's crazy stuff here. So you've got to listen to the story to find out how he does it, how he manages his time, all that sort of good stuff. Um, plus, you're going to get detail around all of his trading setups and how he even makes withdrawals from his trading account. So how he takes money out and when he does it. So we get into all that sort of minutia. Uh, look, unfortunately, there's no video with this show, so we didn't get time to do it. He's a busy guy, um, but he did promise that he'll do a live trading stream on the channel as well. So um, hopefully we can tie it in this week. If not, we look forward for that in, sometime in the future. Instead, though, I've got Richard Nassar back on, and he's doing a video. He's done a video where he shows us how to walk through and analyze any chart uh, from scratch without using indicators. So that's coming up here this week on Trading Up. Other things to think about, we've got the Trading Up Funder Cup running for July. Uh, It's over there on City Traders Imperium, my sponsor's website. So if you want to go over there and see how the leaders are going, go and check that out. And I've got word on the street that the September Cup will be starting in September. So if you do want to register for that, I think you can do that over there at City Traders Imperium now already. And word on the street is that it's a $400,000 funded account up for grabs. So not confirmed yet, but that's the word on the street. Last but not least, before we jump into the show, we've got the Robot Builders Club up there this August. So this is where I teach you guys how to automate all of your strategy or some of your strategy semi-automate it, fully automate it, turn it into a MetaTrader 4 or 5 trading robot without any coding at all. And this August, we've got the OMB bot, open market break bot that I've created as part of the robot lab up there for you guys to grab uh, if you join in August 2022. Uh, Last but not least, do remember, we've got some awesome traders coming up on the show. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, click on that notifications bell and click the little all uh, drop down that pops up because you don't want to miss these. There's some fantastic traders coming up, folks. So stay tuned. All here on Trading Up. Let's get on with this interview. 
As you'll know, as a trader, one of the biggest issues can be coming up with enough capital to make it worthwhile. Well, the good news is my sponsor, City Traders Imperium, have solved this problem for you. Their day trading and swing trading funding programs mean you can trade between 10,000 and 4 million in capital with up to 100% profit share. Yes, you get everything you make on the account. Plus, the folks at CTI have made it super stress-free, allowing you up to six months to pass the funding challenge, which means if life gets in the way, you can park things for a while and stick to your trading plan. To check the out click the link in the description below or in the card above all right folks here we are on trading up we've got lord banks in the house uh all the way from texas so welcome to the show uh well, let's just call you lord we'll call you lord shall sounds we? good yeah or lb that's fine LB, LB, LB. lb's lb sounds more like a name um yeah right <laughs> well welcome to the show now I, i've actually caught one of your full live streams and that's how i found out about you and i think you're on a a 19 to 0 winning streak and yep. i don't know where, where where is that at the moment uh well we actually snapped it at 20 <laughs> it snapped it at 20 yeah. okay well that's yeah, still we that, it at 20 that's still very very good and that was probably about a month ago so um so well done on that now we're going to find out about your story how you got into trading and the eight other businesses that you run and this crazy life you've got which sounds awesome from the little chat we've had beforehand so to start off with uh yeah how how on earth did you get into trading and maybe even start all the way back from your entrepreneurial journey as well um yeah so you know it was i started trading back in 2014 um and you know i it didn't go like before I started trading, I've, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart, and I've, I've started businesses. When I when I started trading, I was already I already had a business earning well into the six figures, and um, so I didn't start from like a, you know, I didn't have any money, and I started from completely zero. You know, I was able to fund my account and whatnot. Um, but the thing is, is, you know, I was kind of cocky when I started trading. Um, you know, I I had this knack of being able to start businesses and um, finding quick success. So I didn't think I had to go through the normal um, process in in one's own trading journey, right? Every, every, everybody's trading journey is unique. But for me, I thought, you know, I could just jump in and avoid risk management, avoid trading plans, avoid, you know, strategies and just make a decision of buying and selling and, and make money, um, which is essentially gambling. <laughs> But, um, you know, I was I was toying with it and I was able to make quick money. But as quickly as I made it, I, I lost it. I mean, we're, we're talking about span of two weeks. Uh, you know, I was able to make 80,000 and then lost more than, than that. And uh, I think that's kind of when it hit me and I was like, oh, I need to really, you know, figure out the skill of this. Um, but what attracted to me at first to it is I've always been intrigued by trading itself. And I had originally started uh, looking into like uh, day trading stocks. Uh, <clears throat> one of my mentors at the time, uh, which is one of my uncles, uh, he, I always looked up to him as super successful. And uh, I was watching him and um, we talked about it and he was into trading. And in that moment, I asked him, you know, what he thought about like the currency market, uh, markets and, and commodities and whatnot. And he shot me down. He shot me down. He said, oh, don't get into that. It's like the worst thing to do. Like, you shouldn't do that. You're going to be up all uh, all hours of the night. It's not it's not worth it, blah, 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 blah. And um, I've had this knack of like when people tell me not to do things, I go do those things, you know, okay. go against the flow, go against the grain. You know, I, I've always had. Um, kind of that mindset. Um, and I, I think I've been able to find a lot of success, you know, just being an entrepreneur going kind of that way. Um, so that's kind of when I started. And this was back in 2014. And, you know, for the first couple of years, it was just a shit show, really. I mean, it was the worst. Like, um, I kept blowing accounts. It was like, I couldn't catch a break. Like when I thought I was like, catching a break, I would just lose it quickly. Um, I didn't understand the structure. I didn't understand um, the parameters, the rules. Like, you know, when it comes to trading, it's very, um, it's a blank canvas. And you can make it work, but you have to paint your own rules. You have to then be disciplined to follow your own rules. Uh, you know, it's not like having a job where, you know, they tell you what time to come in. They tell you what you're going to do. They tell you how much of it you got to do. They tell you when you can take your break and they tell you when you can leave. It, trading is is something that can replace that income, but you have to come up with the rules and then you have to be disciplined enough to follow. Um, and then be able to be analytical enough to 
review and measure, you know, documenting your, your progress and tweaking from there, you know, to get better and better. Um, but um, yeah, so that's kind of where I, I got started back in 2014. Um, and before then I was working on business, uh, like building my own businesses. Um, and I do have like eight different business ventures that I'm involved in. And, um, you know, it sounds a little crazy to say that, like most people don't have like that many things going on. But, you know, to clarify, all these things are things that I love to do. Um, and I've built systems around them and I built teams around them. So it's not like like it's just me running eight different businesses by myself, you know, so that would be kind of extreme. Um, Can you but, give us some uh, insight into the into the businesses that you've got running there? Uh, yeah, sure. So like um, one, one of my business is a um, full service digital agency. Uh, you know, we cater to uh, more like lead generation marketing type of help. Um, and that was like one of my first businesses that we got off the ground. Um, and then I have a, a blockchain tech company um, that we build, um, you know, applications using the blockchain uh, technology. And then I have um, a partnership with the real estate broker. Um, you know, they, they sell homes and whatnot. Um, I also um, am part owner in a landscape business. Um, and I also um, have a consulting firm is probably uh, one of my most successful um, companies. We it's a consulting firm that focuses on uh, business management, process improvement, and quality, uh, primarily for biomedical engineering firms and pharmaceutical companies. So um, <clears throat> essentially, I'm I'm kind of like uh, my, that company is like a fixer, you know, like when uh, companies are in trouble, <laughs> we come in and fix things. Um, so, yeah, and, that, and all that kind of is going on in the background um, while like my primary source of income has, has, has shifted to trading now um and it has been over the past few years but um you know essentially i've I've built these along the way um i think my my first business we got started at the end of 2012 um and 2013 it kind of uh really skyrocketed and by 2014 you know i was well into the six figures uh earning with with that business so um like i said i didn't i didn't start from you know, I, I know I've heard a lot of people that, oh, I had like $10 and I started a trading account and, you know, now I'm a millionaire. I, I don't have that kind of story. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, because you, know, you obviously I, you obviously started off with a bit. If you were going to make eighty k and then lose more than that in yeah, the first thing, what, yeah, what yeah. was that? I, I, what my, was that starting first, balance? Yeah, my first uh, starting balance on my account was fifty k. Yeah. Okay, so you, so, I mean, that's okay. That, so, what do you think you were risking on those trades that you sort of grew it to eighty k? I, you know, at that time, I didn't even realize that the lot size had a direct impact on the value. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I suppose it was you your know? first two so, weeks. So, like, yeah. I took a trade and it was like, uh, it was making me a couple of dollars and I was like, ah, I need to make more. And then I just ended up adding lot sizes and I was like, okay, this one's saying into the thousands. And I think I was like trading at the beginning of that, maybe like a hundred lots or something, like something ridiculous. And and I got lucky. I got lucky. I swear it, that's all it was. It was just yeah. pure luck. It was Euro USD. And I was so excited. I made like, I think like $25,000 in a day. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is going to be awesome. And the next day I made like 10,000. And then the next day I made like, I think five. And then I stopped that week. And then the next week, I lost like $86,000. Like in, <laughs> I'm telling you in like four hours. And I was oh, like, geez. I've never lost so much money in my life so quickly. Like, I that was probably the only time I contemplated. Uh, I contemplated quitting uh, trading. Yeah. I remember after that, I was like, okay, so it, this is a serious thing. I have to take it more seriously. I have to be as serious I, as I am with my businesses to make this work. Um, and I and I had to understand that these these occasions when I lose money will happen. And I had to mentally put myself in a state of mind that no matter what, I'm going to continue because I'm going to figure it out. Eventually, mm-hmm. I'm going to get to a point. Um, and, it, and it sucks, yeah, but the, to be losing and blowing accounts and whatnot. But each time you progress, each time you learn a, a small sliver piece, uh, one facet of the entire wheel of what it is, of the skills that you need to compound and put together to be successful, you know? And so, so you've talked about like multiple account blows during that first two years. I mean, what, yeah. what kind of account? So, you, if your first account was fifty k, were you blowing fifty k accounts? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I didn't. Um, after, after that fifty k that I'd blown, um, well, I had grown it up to almost like ninety thousand, and I blew like eighty six thousand. 
Um, I think after then, I only funded him with 10,000. So I would fund with 10,000 and I would build, 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 and then have losses. And then I would go on a downtrend and end up blowing the account. So I think I might've lost probably, I want to say I've blown over 10 accounts. So over, over a hundred thousand dollars. Like, I mean, I, I, I've lost uh, quite a bit at the beginning stages, but at the level I'm at now, like I've I've made that in way much more over, you know, Um, I think it's like kind of like that whole give, 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 give (laughs) until you get your return. Uh, It doesn't have to be like that. It's just, I didn't have a trading mentor. I, I, the market taught me, you know, like I, I learned from the streets, you know, like just straight on the price and it's showing me what's right and wrong. I came up with my own rules, my own strategies, my own, like I, I didn't have someone be able to guide me, you know, like it, it was just straight raw. And, and I, I mean, not that those people didn't exist. It's just, uh, we live in a world in the, in this industry that is very, you know, it can be very shady. You know, there's a lot of uh, people that, you know, violate that trust, you know, and, and guide you incorrectly or, or really don't know what they're talking about. They're just really great network marketers, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So um, it, it was, for me, it was, a, it was off putting, um, and I and I said I, I'm going to figure it out for myself, um, and I think it's probably one of my greatest accomplishments, to be honest. <laughs> and so, so that that first two year period, I mean, just with with the eight businesses that you're running, and I don't even know how on earth you you do this. This is just crazy in its own yeah. right. Um, how on how on earth did you fit trading into into this to be able to do it well, enough? Like to I, get, I tell know, everybody, you know. You, Trading is especially like when you're dealing with the the currencies, um, even commodities and and indices like it runs 24 five. Right. So, you know, at some point and a lot of the things that I was doing when running my businesses and getting things in order is on the computer. Right. Like so I'm already in front of the computer um, almost 18, 20 hours a day. So, you know, I was slotting times where I'm like having breakfast or lunch or like, you know, I'm listening to to a, a, a call in the background and I have the charts in front of me. Um, and it was just working at that, getting familiar with what I was looking at and what I was looking for. Uh, because, you know, when I started trading, I, I had no strategy. I had no, like, I was just literally, you know, throwing money in and, and trying to make something happen. Yeah. Um so, so you had basically had time in front of the computer where you were like looking at the market. I mean, did you have one chart up? Did you have multiple time frames? What, what? How oh yeah, you like up? when when I started out, I had like every single pair. I had like everything that was on there, and I didn't like um, like the 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 common pairs or the base pairs, uh, the USD base pairs. I like volatility. I like things to move because that that I understood when things move, that's when you have opportunity to make money. Um, so whether it's up or down, right? Like it doesn't matter. Um, but for me, you know, I loved like sticking to like GJ. I love gold. I love the indices. Um, and that's what I ended up sticking with. But be- before when I got started, I mean, I had every pair in the world. I mean, there was a time where I used to trade the Asian session. Um, and now I, I just focus on London and uh, New York. Um, and that's like my main bread and butter. Yeah. Um, and so, I'll so, have like sometimes that a trade will, will trigger, but based on price alert, um, but that's just based on a, like either a swing or, or pattern trend trading where I'm waiting for a certain price to meet, um, to hit, right? And, that could happen at any time of the day. <clears throat> so so how did you break down, like with, you know, no mentoring, no, and I'm guessing you didn't go on YouTube and research stuff or do uh, yeah, I, I, like I watched YouTube, but like there was a lot of like, the thing about the YouTube is like a lot of people were, were trying to sell other people dreams, like, you know, flashing cars, flashing stacks of cash and like, which never made sense to me because in, in a world, the world we live in today, everything is done electronically, digitally. So, so most people had to go to the bank to <laughs> withdraw the, yeah. an enormous amount of cash to put on a video. Like, do you understand the, the, like the effort that takes to go do that, to make that type of anyways, for me, I, I just, I I didn't want to, to look at that. I wanted to learn a skill. Um, so, you know, I honestly like just spending time on the charts, just spending time on the chart. And, and at first it went from just looking at the charts. Like one, I remember one um, month that I was like trying to get better. 
I stayed up for like three days straight looking at the chart and which is not, don't do that. <laughs> that's not, that's not the right way to learn. But, but because I was like, I just have to spend more time on the charts. Right. That was like my mm. mindset in that moment. And so I spent like three days straight and I was like, I got to figure this out. And um, it did, it didn't work. Obviously it, it's not about like, I know a lot of people will be like, Oh, you got to spend thousands and thousands of hours on the chart. That's true. But it's like how you're spending them and what time you're spending. Them, right. Yeah. Like now I, I focus when, when I'm testing out different strategies and stuff, you know, I focus on, okay, what session, right. Am I, am I in the London session? Am I in the New York session? What, what time parameter? Mm-hmm. And um, you know, for the London, I, I'm only doing three, four hours. I'm not doing the whole London session yeah. for, for the New York. I'm just doing three, four hours. It's not the whole New York session. Right. Um, so like it, it whittles down and refines to that level. But when I started, it was like all the pairs all day long and, you know, not having any kind of structure or direction. But the longer you stay at that, you're it's not sustainable. <laughs> so yeah. so you start figuring out, OK, oh, the movement came during London. Oh, the movement came during New York. So maybe I should just look at this time. Right. And you start it comes down to that. Like you start sorting it out. Um, and it, and that's what the thousands of hours take is to figure out which session is going to work for you. Because for example, if that session came into play where the movement was happening, but for some reason I'm busy doing something else where I can't focus that time on there, then that session isn't for me. You know, like I tell a lot of uh, my community, it's like, you, you need to that's part of your trading plan, right? You need to pick what time you're going to be trading, what session you're going to be trading, what pair you're going to be trading, what are you going to be looking for, right? Um, So instead of, like I said before, the trading in general is a blank canvas. So you can stay on here from Monday market open to Friday market close and still not have an opportunity and wear yourself out. But it's not about trying to perfect it overall. It's trying to perfect one small part of it whether it's, you know, the opening of London session or the opening of New York session or, you know, a transitioning to Asian session, whatever, you know, your, your strategy ends up being, um, you're not going to be on the charts the entire time. Um, and that was one of the things I think I learned over the thousands of hours I was spending on the charts. And, and was, there, was there any, like, out of all these hours, was there any one thing sort of that, you know, started you on the path to going, oh, hang on a sec, if I, I had this I in... Think... Yeah, I think what really helped me, maybe not like strategy wise, but helped me grow in those different levels exponentially was when I stopped focusing on the amount of money, like just the money in general. Like I started trading and I was able to make money really quickly. And that was what hooked me. And I think that's what hooks a lot of people in this industry or intrigued in this industry coming on to like any kind of social media, you know, they're, they're selling your emotions with these fancy cars and clothes and cash and, you know, the lifestyle. Right. Mm. Um, So people are, they kind of set a precedent that sets people up for failure really, because as a trader, if I wasn't a trader and I was intrigued because what I saw in my mind, I want money and I want lots of it to, to live that lifestyle. Right. So I come in, like, I want to make all this money. And that's the worst thing to do because like when you're in the, in the charts, if you're focusing on the money, your emotions are going to become involved. And you, when your emotions are involved, the trading psychology, which is hugely underestimated will cause you to see things that don't exist on the chart. And that's why you lose. You know, you got to come in, focus on how can I take the best setup, take the best trade and win my trade from a technical standpoint, not not from a monetary game, Mm. you know, and when you focus on the skill and not the money, it just changes the game like it. it, You actually get better. (laughs) I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know any any professional sporting athletes that have focused on the money and got there. They're all focusing exactly. on the skill, right? It's, it's exactly, it's, yeah. exactly, and with any business in general, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, like I, I understand every, you know, like I tell my community, everyone understands you're here for the same reason. Nobody comes into trading and be like, I want to lose today. No, everybody wants to make money, but that's redundant. Put that to the back burner. Like, let's get good at the skill because the skill, by de facto, will give you the money. <laughs> you know, so don't focus on the money. Though, focus on the skill. Get good at the skill, and that in turn will give you the money that you want. Um, but, um, 
you know, it's, it's difficult sometimes because it's, it's a very emotional trigger for a lot of people. You know, a lot mm. of people come into this with their last hundred dollars and they want to make everything happen for them. And that's very difficult. Uh, you know, I, I know there's people that can flip small accounts. I mean, I've done it myself personally, but like I've been trading for a very long time and you know, the, the, the strategies and the use of being able to do so is not sustainable. Like, you know, I, I tell my community all the time, like, what do you want? You want one, decent payout on gambling or you want this to sustain you? you you're trying to replace or supplement income here like what is your plan is this something serious or are you just messing around you know um and that's kind of one of the things that i learned early on is you know if i want this to be serious then i have to take it seriously and, and did you like when you're constructing your strategy were you how are you sort of noting down the rules that you were going to include in the strategy and going, yep, this is a good um, one. This so is not I, I, I tell my community all the time, like um, the rules came from the L's. So the market, when I lost, I would mark down and nobody likes to lose. And so I, I tell my, my, my community, they're not L's, they're lessons, right? I paid for those lessons. Ah, yes. right? yeah, yeah, now, yeah. now I can give you those lessons for free and I can tell you over, you know, the live but if you want to pay for that lesson yourself to go ahead and that's fine because then you'll learn because it's a different impact when you're actually paying for it yourself, right? When you're losing in the market, you're going to remember, don't trade NFP, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, you're, you're going to yeah. remember, don't hold trades over the weekend, right? You're, you're going to, you're going to remember those things because they hurt. Um, and that's what, what taught me is, is my L's, that turned into lessons that I paid for. And it's okay, you know, because it's definitely worth it <laughs> at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, and when things started to turn around, I mean, what were the, what were the key signs for you that uh, I'm like, now this is, this is really. When I was on now. my third month and uh, like, I was on my third month and I was withdrawing, like I would draw every week. So I was on my third month and I withdrew and I was like, hold on a second. Like I've been, withdrawing like every week for a while now like i was like and i didn't want to jinx it i was like all right all right don't change anything <laughs> you know I, I didn't want to go back into to to where i'm not withdrawing but but in the back of my mind i was like oh wow like this is pretty nice okay cool like i like this i like this and i just i just didn't want to focus on the withdrawals i just kept focus on like okay do the same things because it's it's a it's a process of being able to repeat the same stuff over and over to be able to create a system, right? Um, you don't have a system unless you have a step-by-step -step and a strategy is essentially the same thing. So, you know, being able to know what time I'm going to trade, what pair I'm going to trade, what, what I'm going to be like, what I'm going to be looking for, what my risk is going to be, and then being able to execute that over and over and over. And, and this is why I tell a lot of like the people in my community, like stop trying to trade, you know, a hundred different things. If you're not consistent and profitable right now, clear your clear your entire watch list. Pick one thing. You gotta you gotta first figure out what it takes to to master and not even master because I, I don't think anyone you know I consider myself a student of the game. So like it it's just being able to get consistent with one, knowing the effort that it's gonna take to do that mm. is gonna change the game for you because then you'll realize if you want if you're trading let's for example G gbp usd and and you're not consistent and profitable but you just work on that eventually you will get consistent and profitable then you'll understand the effort and the requirements it takes to to develop that so then if you want to go trade eu or gj or gold or whatever then you're going to know what it's going to take out of you to be able to get a handle on being consistent and profitable with that right so um i think a lot of people you know, have a misconception that they're like, oh, I'm not doing good with GU. Let me go to uh, AJ or let me go to uh, trade US 30 or, oh, no, NSC sucks. So let me go to commodities and trade gold. It, it, that's not the way it works. It's the worst way because psychologically you get into a, a consistent pattern of losing. So your, your, your whole psychology is now wired to think like a loser. You're expecting a loss at some point. Um, and, and it takes a lot to get you back on feeling what it feels like to win mm. right because you know it there's a difference when you're you're like hesitant to jump on the charts because you've been losing right yeah. i've been there and, and i'm telling you everything i'm telling you because i've been there personally you know like like you know when when you've been losing a whole month straight and you're like man i i don't even want to trade <laughs> you know and you come on the charts that that whole mindset is way different than you if you've been winning for three months straight and you jump on you're ready you're ready for monday you're like let's yeah. go open up 
you yeah, know yeah. it's a different mindset and and it it weighs it, the amount that that impacts your trading is huge huge because it's all emotion it's all emotion and if you're you know having that kind of like mindset or feeling that you're like oh you don't even want to be on the charts you need to do something quick you need to shock the system turn it around get a small win and just string a couple of small wins to get back on that winner's mentality yeah. Yeah, you know? it, is, it is it is such a big thing and i think that nobody has mentioned that on the in the hundred and like eighty odd episodes I've done in this this podcast, let alone the other podcasts yeah. that I've got, um, nobody's mentioned that. But I think that is a huge, huge thing. Is just that: Are you feeling like a winner today, or are you feeling like oh, I'm going to trade, but I don't know what's going to happen? I'm a bit. Yeah, I mean that's a big one. That's a big one, guys. Note that down. Yeah. Um, now, yeah. what about your withdrawals? So you mentioned withdrawals mm-hmm. when you were doing that first three months worth of withdrawals. I mean, what was your sort of metric for? I'm going to make a withdrawal and this is the amount I'm going to do. So, um, you know, like I, you, you have to understand where you are as far as your account and your, your goals. Right. So in, in those, like at the beginning stages, I was in, in full scale mode, you know, I'm, I'm trying to compound. So, uh, but at the, at the same time you have to, um, one of the, one of the things that create good habits is reward. Right. So you have to reward yourself. So for me, I started out when when I had a a smaller account balance and really, honestly, I consider anything less than 10,000 small account balance. Um, I would just take like 20 percent, take 20 percent of my profit of the week. I wouldn't touch the the main uh, capital uh, because I like I tell my community, there's there's two rules in trading. Number one rule is protect account capital. Number two, don't lose money. (laughs) <laughs> that's it. Like if you can nail that down, you're good. Right. Um, but so I would only take out about 20% and then it raised up from there to about 50%. Um, and then about 80%. Um, and now really like I just take what I made, you know, um, okay. I trade the same amount It's because it's easier for me now to, um, have to calculate lot size and stuff because I, I, I base it on a risk percentage. So my lots are fixed now because it's the same amount, mm. you know? Um, so whatever I make, I take and like, sometimes I'll have like, where I'm like, okay, I feel like my account's like too big or I won't withdraw just because I don't need to. And then I'll like do a big withdrawal, like at the end of the month or something. Yeah. Um, especially like if I'm planning something or, you know, I need a large, you know, cash influx, <laughs> I'll do, I'll do one of those bulk uh, uh, withdrawals. But um, really I like to, keep it the same size, my account capital and, uh, and just withdraw the profit. Because for me, it, it makes more sense visually and the act of seeing myself not, not touching my main money and, and making the money. Right. Like, so I feel like I'm actually making money here. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and so just to go back. So you said at the start that this is your, now your main source of income over and above the eight other businesses yeah. and investments you've got yeah wow that's crazy yeah. and, and yeah. back back to the very first withdrawal can we ask how much that was just my on- first withdrawal that i actually made after like gambling let's say <laughs> was like twenty six hundred dollars okay. um it was like and it was exciting because you know it wasn't breaking my account i wasn't clearing it all out um it wasn't the entire profit that i made and it was nice, like $2,600 at that time was a decent amount for me to do things with. Like yeah. I, I was surprised and I was happy, you know, so yeah. um, I just wanted to keep it going, you know, from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So so um, let, let's dive into some of the sort of stats around any current trading, like how you trade and, and, uh, and that sort of thing. Yeah. So um, if you had to talk about like the timeframes that you trade, what how do you break down a chart with, through tr- time frame analysis? So like I have multiple different strategies and this is another thing about me is I, I know uh, many traders identify with one particular style of trading and they'll live and die by it. You know, Oh, I'm a, I'm a scalper. I'm, I'm a swing trader. I'm, you know, pattern trend trader. I'm, you know, straight, whatever. Like for me, I have strategies for, for different things. So I'm, I'm a versatile trader. Like I have, for example, the London, the London lives that I do, I only trade a, a breakout strategy where I'm focusing on a particular range and I'm leveraging the pre-market and market open volume to be able to catch a quick 10, 15, 20 pip scalp. Now, 
those trades can push up, you know, and hit 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 pips, and, and it's happened. But my main focus is a quick scalp. So in that strategy, I'm focused. I do top-down analysis on, on every single one, but I'm more focused on the four-hour to identify key levels or areas of interest. Um, and, you know, this is – it could be references, supply and demand or support and resistance, whatever you want to call it. But mainly what I'm looking for is areas where price has reaction, um, whether it's holding level of support or breaking through and retesting – and, and that historically that in that area, price has multiple times where there's reaction. Um, so I focus that on the four hour. And then um, from the four hour, I kind of refine it a little bit on, um, and I call it my zones, my top and bottom zones. I refine it on the one hour. And then I just move down to the 15 minute. The zones is only to give me kind of like a, my play area per se. Okay. Um, and then within the zone where the price is currently at, I look for a breakout range. Right. So the breakout range is going to be, you know, you're focusing on areas of consolidation in the market. Um, you're usually coming from uh, Asian, which there's not usually there's not a ton of volume in Asian and moving into London. And then in London, you've got your pre-market and market open uh, volume. So I'm leveraging that price will pop up or down. And like I tell my community, you know, I our job as traders is not to predict price. Our job as traders is to react to price. So for me, I just set that up and I wait for price to tell me what it's going to do, whether it's going to break up or down. And um, then I have like a couple of rules based on price action because I I don't use any indicators. So um, based on price action, if it breaks up or down, then I take the trade um, once I read the price action, right? So, and that's on the 15 minute. So I'm executing on the 15, uh, but doing analysis, top down analysis and setting up zones on the four hour. um, and, and that's you, kind of overall like the time how I do it. And and what about um, winning percentage? What have you, you ever looked at your stats um, around? Yeah, that? yeah. Actually, um, I just looked yesterday, and I was at eighty eight point eight nine. Um, so you know, my winning rate is a little bit higher, but the for the most part, the winning rate is coming on one to ones, right? Because uh, the way I structure my trades is. If my stop loss is about 15, 20 pips, then I'm shooting for about 15, 20 pips, right? That's going to be my one-to-one. And at one-to-one, I'm, I'm adjusting my stop loss to break even, taking partials, or or if I just want to adjust my stop loss to break even and allow it to run, then I, I do that as well. But that, that determination is based on where my account is, where I am at in the week, if, if I've been profitable, right? Like if I've already made you know, a decent profit for the week, I may just put it at break even because yeah. I'm okay with the profit that I've made, right? Yeah. So extra is extra. Let's take the gamble. Why not? But if I'm like down on the week and I haven't made money on the week, then I'm probably going to take partials, right? I may close 50% at TP1 or or, or 80%, you know, and, and leave a runner. Um, that's difficult for people that have smaller accounts because, you know, if you're trading like 0.01, then you really can't, you know, if you, but if you're at a point that you're only trading 0.01, you should just take the whole thing, <laughs> you know, at TP1. But, um, you know, if you have a larger account capital, let's say you're, you're trading a full lot size, you know, you can close half of that 0.5 and uh, secure some money in the bank mm. and let the other 0.5 do its thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because there's always going to be that opportunity that you have a runner that will run for, you know, 40, 50, 100 pips, and uh, you have the possibility to catch a portion of that. And how do you determine like where you would exit that sort of final runner? Um, well, so what I do is I usually just do like um, like three target levels. And my target levels are going to be based on purely off price action, looking to the left and looking to um, levels of uh, resistance if I'm buying and levels of support if I'm selling. So um, those are going to be my next levels, target levels, right? So um, I don't like to deal with the wicks, but I like when it's nice, fluid motion. So if I'm looking to the left, the price action needs to flow and see, you can clearly see there's a level of support or resistance on the 15. And that's to the most current where the price is currently at, right? Because, I mean, you can look at a chart and see support and resistance all over the place. But what you want to keep in mind is the the next levels of support and resistance based on where the current price is at. And and have you ever looked at your average risk to reward ratio, which might be depending on how you look at things, it might be quite hard to work out. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I don't, not really, because like I said, I, I'm, I'm not a, I know there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I just do one to threes or one yeah, to tens yeah. or one to fives, but my trading is not based on that. My trading is based more on like the winning amounts of trades, because like, let's, let's say, for example, out of 10 trades, those traders that are, are doing one to three risk to reward or, you know, one to 10 or whatever, they can lose four five, six trades, right? And win two or three of them and be in the positive yeah. because their risk to reward is, is more in their benefit. They're, they're leveraging that side of probability. Yeah. I'm leveraging the side of probability that I can get 80, 90% out of like eight, nine trades out of 10 to close that TP1 and secure those profits from a percentage side, right? I'm leveraging that probability instead of the risk to reward, um, which it, I mean, both of them can pay you out. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know? So, um, but the the side that I'm I'm airing on is because I know consistently, I can eighty to ninety percent of the time hit that first target level, and for me that's enough. Because if I'm if I, let's say, if I'm taking see I'll I'll take one or two trades London, one or two trades New York. So let's say about maybe four trades a day maximum. If I'm taking four trades a day. And I win 80% of that, I'm up like 3% a day, right? So if you do the math for the week, like my week looks pretty nice. And that's not including the ones that I close partials and have has runners. And that's not including towards the end of the week when I'm already up and I just put my stop loss to break even and don't take partials and leave the runners run. Then I have really nice returns. I mean, I've had returns where I'm like 20, 30, 40% in a day. Which Jeez. is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. You know? yeah. yeah. You know, um, like the average and the the, mo- the best traders in the world will return 10% in a month. But I'm leveraging a whole completely different side. You know, I, I know a lot of people just like to set up a trade and whether it hits stop or hits take profit and their risk reward is, is what's going to save them. And that's fine. And people are successful and profitable that way. It's just that's not my main trading style. Um and, and it sounds so, like, yeah, you, like it sounds like you take a trade every every session, at least one trade. Um, what's the sort of yeah. what's the what's the most you'd take, and what's the least you take? So oh, I, I have rules, right? I have yeah. rules, right? So like, if I take a trade and I lose, I, I give myself a second opportunity. If that second opportunity is also an L, then I'm I'm done with that session. I don't I don't keep trading. Um, now, if I win that second trade after losing one then I have a decision to make whether or not I can or cannot take the next trade. The only time I'll take a third trade is, is if I have a really nice setup, I've been waiting on the setup and like, it looks good. I'm not going to try to chase anything or try to force anything. And for the most part, if I was to give you a percentage, maybe about 25% of the time, I'll take that third trade. Um, but for the most part, like if I win one lo- and, or lose one and win one, I usually just call it there. Um, right. You know, I don't like to test my luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so you could, but you usually find a setup. Yeah, it's not often. That doesn't sound like you ever don't take a oh, trade in a session. Yeah, no, no, no. Like I'm, I'm for the most part, I set up what I like to call a theory, right? Like I have a theory of either going up or down, and then I just wait for the market to get there. And I've had times where it doesn't play out, and that's why I kind of cut because I used to trade Monday through Friday, um, but then when I reviewed, when I went back to review, like my, my trading journal, a lot of my L's were coming on Mondays and Fridays. So I said, you know what? I just cut them. Right, okay. I cut, yeah. I cut Mondays and Fridays. So I yeah. only trade Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday now, but before Mondays and Fridays, I would trade them. And then a lot of times I would have no setup, like no setup, no trade days. I'd be like, I have a setup and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And then my time comes to where I'm done trading and it hasn't got to where it needs to get to. I just don't take a trade. And those were also frustrating. And I think that's kind of why maybe I started to take more L's on Mondays and Fridays because I didn't want to be on a session and not take a trade knowing myself how my personality is. So I said, you know what, let me just cut Mondays and Fridays altogether. So now I just trade Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, where those really are the the meat and potatoes of the trading week, right? Like you get nice volume, you know, markets have been open, like, you know, usually Mondays or Fridays, you get crazy news or gaps all over the place. And that's very difficult to, to, to come in with your trading plan, trade that 
because you're going to get a lot of the um, singularities on those days. You're going to get all the things that are outside of your threshold if you're really trying to refine your strategy on those days, which throw everything out a loop. So the most consistent for me is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Radio. That's it. And and you, you mentioned some of the pairs you might be trading. So what pairs are you trading now? Um, so what I, I like to focus on is GJ, uh, GPP, JPY, gold, and US 30. Those are like my, my bread and butter, but it's just because I'm so accustomed to trading them. Sometimes though, like with my community, they're like, hey, can you look at this or can you look at that? And I'll, I'll draw up, uh, I'll mark up a chart. And uh, it could be AU, it could be, you know, EJ or whatever. And the the same markup still plays out. Um, I think I, one day um, in my telegram, I sent out like 15 charts. And like out of the 15, I think it was like 12 or 13 all hit. Oh, so <laughs> I was like, but I just don't have the time to like yeah. be trading yeah. all these, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather just keep it simple. I have a couple of things that I focus on and, and I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, like hit records here. All I'm trying to do is just be consistent and be profitable. And uh, you don't need all these different things. And like, I think there's too many options when it comes to trading. And and that kind of stunts a lot of people's growth and initial trading journey is because they don't know which way to go and which pair is best and what like, there's no right or wrong answer. Pick one, flip yeah, a coin, yeah, yeah. and just stick yeah, to it. Stick you to know? it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now, now, what is your? I'm going to say, what does your typical Tuesday look like? Because I'm guessing so you um, don't trade Monday or Friday, and you've got all these other businesses. I want to sort of hear yeah. how trading fits into everything else that you do. So my my day for Tuesday actually starts at 10:30 p.m. Monday night um, because I start trading at midnight my time um, Tuesday. So 10:30 is when I get up. And um, I like to do meditation and my uh, morning journaling, like um, for the emotional side of things, the psychology side of things for trading and uh, to make sure I'm setting my intentions to like, you know, we're starting the week off and let's start strong and let's have a good one and, you know, be positive and focused, um, you know, be very intentional about what I'm doing. So um, that's kind of when I start. It's it's like nighttime. And most of you are like, you're starting your day at nighttime, but that's how my schedule is. And so, um, you know, I get everything set up by 1130. I'm, I'm on my um, desktop and I'm getting everything set up to send out the live, doing the live stream for the London session. And I'll live stream London session from 12 to 4, uh, do the live trading there. And then after 4, um, I like to go to the gym or at least go get like a, a fruit smoothie. And then I come back a couple of hours later and I do uh, the New York session and I do New York session from 6.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Um, with my my private VIP Telegram members. Um, that's just a Zoom call. So we'll do Zoom call and we'll scalp US 30 from 6.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. And then really like after 9.30 a.m., sometimes I jump off a little early if, if we've already taken our trade and taken our profits. Like by like 9 a.m. or 9.30 a.m., I have scheduled meetings and phone calls webinars and teleconferences and I focus on my business work from like 9 30 a.m to maybe about 2 3 p.m in the afternoon um, and then after that uh, like around three or four is when I have like my break and I'm like usually I, I like to get to bed by like five or six because I have like about four hours four or five hours before you know I have to get up again so um, I'm averaging about four hours of sleep but even before when I was just doing my businesses, um, I, I was like, I'm okay if I get five hours. And like with trading and stuff, it whittled itself down to now like three to four, maybe five hours. Uh, but those are usually like Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, like Thursday after New York session, like now, like I don't have, like tomorrow I'm not going to get up early, right? So I'll sleep in a little bit. Um, and then usually the weekend, um, I reserve for like doing one-on-ones with um, some of my students and uh, some of the communities. They book one-on-ones with me and, um, you know, I'll do a couple of those uh, every weekend and um, yeah, get back at it too. On Monday as I'm back to my normal schedule where I'm going to bed like around 4 or 5 p.m. Um, so I can be up, you know, yeah. at 11 p.m. for the midnight stream. Cool. And, and so uh, like in a weekend, what time would you go to bed? Uh, on the weekend, it's it's it completely ruins my schedule because like on the weekend, I usually like 
like to take the time during the day to spend with like family and hanging out and like personal stuff. And then usually like by the evening, like maybe eight, nine o'clock, I always come back to like trying to learn more things. Like, you know, if I'm testing a strategy, looking at different things, looking at notes, um, just looking at different educational stuff for my businesses as well. Like, you know, different things I'm trying to innovate, trying to create, um, trying, trying to set up systems for my businesses. So like, I usually use the weekends for that, um, is my growth time. <laughs> cool. And, and what about like, if we, if you had to sort of recommend for a, a retail trader who's new to newish to trading, a step-by-step process to get profitable, what would that be? Um, I would probably say, you know, the first thing is, is have a plan. You, you need to have a trading plan. You need to have structure and you need to be disciplined. Um, I think that's where it all starts. Uh, I think you should delete everything that you thought you knew. Um, start. Don't be afraid to start from scratch. Uh, one of the reasons that I don't use indicators and I'm a straight price action trader is throughout my journey, when I got started, I started using indicators, MAs and Fibonacci's and MACD's and, you know, RSI's and Ichimoku and all, all the indicators. I know all of them. But the thing is, is at some point I ended up getting to a point where they were contradicting each other. I, I And I couldn't make a decision. I was frozen. And that's the worst place to be as a trader is not being able to make a decision whether you're buying or selling. And that's what happened with my charts. Like I had so many indicators, I couldn't even see the candlesticks anymore. Like I didn't know what to do. So I froze up and I thought that was in for me. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to figure this out. And I deleted everything, just removed all, all the indicators. And I said, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to focus that way. I'm not going to do it that way. And for me, I, that's when I, I feel like I really started um, to get into my own and improving. And so like, if I was to tell anyone, you know, starting out is you need to have a plan um, to begin with. And the plan you know, when I say plan, I don't mean like, oh, your plan is to get rich. <laughs> that's not that's not a plan. You know, your plan needs to say, you know, when you're going to trade, what are you going to trade, how you're going to trade, what you're going to risk, what's your strategy. You know, um, all those things are what's important in a trading plan. And the thing is, is with the market, since it's such a blank canvas and there's no rules here, you have to create the rules for yourself and be disciplined enough to follow them yourself and be consistent enough to be able to get a measurable data to then look back and say, okay, what do I need to tweak? Where do I need to get better? Right. Um, and I think that's where that starts. Uh, don't focus on the money and, and focus on the skill. <clears throat> and what about so, like from a, a, a trader's mindset point of view, have you got any sort of hacks that you'd recommend somebody take, in, take on board and, and try, at least try you out? You know, I, I, I don't even like to say a hack, like I don't think there's any shortcuts really. Um, and not to say like some people will get through this quicker than others. Trust me, because I have people in my community. There, there's a 16 year old kid in my community that found me on TikTok and started, he went and watched all my YouTube videos and, and asked tons of questions on the lives. And the dude is straight killing it right now. He turned 17 and he's making more than his teachers and he's based out of the uk <laughs> like it's brilliant. crazy man i'm telling you he, he's I, I call him my protege because i'm like man he, he's just a straight killer but you know his growth happened very quickly right some people it takes years you you can't don't focus on how long it's going to take that like focus on do you want this like do you want this do you want this to work if if you want this for yourself then you have to you have to adopt the no matter what mindset mm. and mentality because yeah. you're going to lose it's going to suck you may blow accounts you may want to quit but you have to make a commitment to yourself right now are you going you want this for real and if you do then you you adopt that no matter what mindset and that is what's going to keep you in the game till you find your path find your success because everybody is different man and that's why there's so many strategies so many ways to trade there there's there's a million different ways to slice this pie you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you're going to get the same thing. Now, there's not one that's right over over another that's wrong. Like like I told my community, we could be taking a sell in a trade that is 
clearly in a bullish uptrend on a higher time frame and someone take a buy and I make my money on the pullback and pull out and still make my money and that person that bought still makes their money. They, we could both win and we're taking different sides of, of the coin. So when you understand that, you, you have to understand that it's not about one sing, singular thing that works. It's about you knowing yourself as like your mindset, your personality, your what you, what your your appetite is for risk cuz some people can't even they can't take swing trades cuz they can't t- look look at any drawdown and they can't be in a trade for very long. They don't like seeing that. They want to go straight into profits, right? So, you first you have to you have, your EQ levels have to be high and become self-aware to know what you are as a person as a trader going to be able to withstand and then build your plan around that. Right. Oh, I, I work so I can only trade after I get off work or before I go into work. So then you're looking at certain sessions. Right. You have to identify that. Mm. Not just, oh, I'm in the middle of work and I'm trying to trade off my phone. You're, you're not going to get nowhere like that. You, yeah. you have to. Like I said, if you want this to be taken seriously for yourself, you have to take it seriously. Um, and I mean, that's that's how I feel about that. I don't think there's like one mm. singular hack, but um, I think it's a culmination of a lot of little things yeah. and yeah. Uh, just Good pick advice. one to start working at, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's great, great advice. In fact, like, I mean, you know, take it, take it. Are you taking it seriously because you're up mm. against the best in the world? Um, now, yeah. we're going to jump into some quick fire questions here to wrap the show up. So how long did it take you to go from newbie to consistently profitable? Um, I, I would say probably like two Around two years, yeah, because uh, the first two years is when it sucked, and then after that it got fun, and then before I knew it, I was like, dude, I'm withdrawing every week, and it's I love this. <laughs> What's your favorite entry setup? Um, I love the breakout strategy for me personally, just because it is the most simplest and yet the most effective strategy, and uh, some people undervalue it because it it's so simple, but you know, don't don't underestimate what twenty pips a day can do for you. <laughs> I'm going to jump in here and kill this uh, quick fire round for a second. Um, what what were the other strategies you had for New York? And I mean, just like you know, not explain the whole so, thing, but obviously the the so the New York strategy. session. I I also do a scalp session, or right, like yeah, it's scalping uh, the US thirty on the one minute. So I'm focusing on that, but it's not um, a breakout strategy. I don't use breakout strategy on indices. Um, it's more of a break of trend line and plain zone to zone strategy. Okay. Um, so you're still kind of leveraging volume, but straight breaking trend lines on the smaller time frame, which is the one minute, but establishing zones on the one hour. And, and how many strat- uh, trades would you take in the New York session typically with the one minute? Um, usually just one or two, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, what's your, uh, how do you exit or manage trades? Um, so I have target levels, right? Um, usually my, my number one is to get to the first target level. Um, the New York session for the US 30 is a little bit different where it's more of a set stop because of the volatility with indices. Um, so I don't go bigger than like what I'm looking for on that as far as taking my first level profit and then adjusting my stops to break even. Uh, but for the most part, I'm always going to look to protect my account capital after the first target level. What's your? Do you have a recommended trading book or resource? Um, I think the only book I like to recommend, um, and it's really the only book. Well, I've, I've read two books. So I, I read Naked Forex by um, Walter Peters, and and that's a good book. Um, I, I don't think you're going to find the answer to everything in there, but I think it's a good book. Uh, but one of my number one recommendations, and I still like to this day, I've probably like read it maybe fifty times. Like, and I sometimes I just put it on Audible. It's Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. Um, and it has nothing to do with actual the technicals of trading, but it has everything to do with what you're thinking about, how you're thinking about, and being able to place yourself in that mindset. Um, like I said at the beginning of this, you know, I think trading psychology is hugely underestimated and undervalued. Um, and I think that once you're able to define a set of skills that you start using technically on the charts and you can see, you know, um, your your wins coming out of that, like the next level of refinement is is the psychology portion. It has to be because, you know, you can only whittle down, uh, uh, you know, your masterpiece so much. To, you, you know, this what this is what works, but to get it to work better is where the psychology portion comes in. Um, <clears throat> but um, Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. It's a, it's a phenomenal book. Now, do you have a preferred broker and trading platform? 
Um, right now, I just recently switched, um, and like I'm, I've been using one, but I don't like. I've been having a lot of problems with the MT5, um, so I'm thinking I'm going to switch again. Um, but right now, I'm using Dominion Markets. Yeah. Hey folks, ever wonder what broker I use? Well, I use Hanko Trade. It was a no-brainer because I was looking for a broker with good trading conditions and one that wouldn't restrict my leverage. Now, by joining Hanko Trade, I've also cut down my trading costs significantly with their super low commission of just one dollar per one hundred k. You can learn more at HankoTrade.com or just click the link I've put in the description. And so, you're using MT5 or MT4 now? MT5 now. Um, I was using MT4, but I've been having a lot of issues like just like technical issues with right, it okay. and um I, I don't i don't like to deal with that side of things because i'm just focused on the charts and yeah. when i set things up i want it to work so um, and i don't know maybe it's my my pc like i got to update or something but i'm gonna have to look at that this weekend for sure i just recently made the switch this month actually um like two weeks ago so <clears throat> do you want to walk us through your worst ever trade my worst ever trade um well, it had to be blown an account probably at the beginning. Uh, and like I talked about earlier with you, I think the worst trade I've ever taken was blowing an account. But this was at a time where I wasn't, I didn't have structure and I didn't have a trading plan. I was gambling. So should I consider it one of my worst trades or should I consider it gambling? You know, it wasn't that fun, but I lost a lot of money. <laughs> um, I didn't know what I was doing at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and I just took the trade, so uh, that was probably the the worst trade I've ever taken. And last question of the show: If you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice, what would it be? Don't quit. Don't quit. Uh, if you really want this, as long as you don't quit, you'll get there. And you have to believe that because um, there's going to be times where it sucks sucks enough for you to think that. You won't get there. So like I, I, I say that because it's personal experience. You know, I, I was at a point one time where I literally thought it was a scam that nobody could make money and, and that, that the people that were making money were liars. <laughs> yeah, I'll be there as well. I'll be there as well. You know? like, so like I was this, like, this, this there's whole, no yeah, way. Yeah. There's no way these people yeah. are making this kind of money. And now that I'm making that money, I'm telling yeah. you, just yeah. don't quit. Yeah. If you really want this, don't quit. Um, now, before we wrap up, what's the best way for the traders to get hold of you? Um, I'm I'm all over social as uh, my name Lord Banks with a Z um, FX. So YouTube, Instagram, um, they can find me as uh, Lord Banks with the Z FX. All, all one word, no ones, no spaces, no underscores, none of that because there's tons of scammers already t- you know yeah. creating fake accounts and i get messages literally like five ten messages a day of people sending me screenshots of other accounts so all one word lord banks with the z fx cool. on well, look, any social facebook uh, instagram youtube that same thing tiktok as well tiktok yeah, yeah. On tiktok as well. Um, well look a big thank you to uh, lb for sharing with us today everything we've discussed here along with all the links he's just mentioned are going to be in the show notes and we'll put a link under the video for that uh, or you can just simply search for lord banks in the search box on tradingnut.com until next time wish all my listeners trading happiness and success righty ho folks so there you have an interview done and dusted with lord banks now do remember he didn't do a video for the show but he did promise me that he'd do a live stream on the channel. So do remember, hit subscribe, hit like, click on that notifications bell, click all so you don't miss that. Uh, We've got the Richard Nassar video coming up uh, on the channel as well. So that's where he's going to basically show you how to analyze a price chart from scratch without any indicators at all. So that's pretty good for if you're a newbie trader and you really want a starting point this is going to be a fantastic little video um the city traders imperium cup uh, for september you can register for that i believe over on citytradersimperium.com 400k funded account hopefully is the prize i think that's going to be the prize so yeah guys go and check that out uh, the robot builders club yet yeah, doors are open this august uh so for the omb bots if you do want to get access to that or you just want to learn how to build your own trading robots without any coding at all then head over there uh, there's links in the description on the podcast or youtube video so go and check that out now i did say to you guys that i would tell you why his name is lord banks or how, how he came up with that name now the more, more important, I mean, banks, you can understand, like, you know, he's basically taking money uh, from the banks is, is where it sort of came from. But Lord, why Lord? Uh, he told me before the show, he's actually, he'd, 
he, what did he say? I think he said that he, he uh, had registered to become a lord in Scotland, of all things. I didn't get into the detail as to why he'd done that or why he decided that was a good idea, but he's gone through the process of becoming a lord in Scotland. I didn't even know that was a thing. And I think he told some of his members, and they said, why don't you call yourself Lord something or other? So anyway, that's how he came up with the name Lord Banks. I um, thought it was quite interesting, and I thought I'd leave you on that. Guys, have a great trading week, and we'll see you in the next episode.